Today we're going to be taking a look at two things from T-Motor. We have the F7SE flight controller and we have the V50ASE ESC. Now this isn't a review more than anything, it's an overview and what I'm going to do today is just give you a quick look at what these two products are all about. Okay, so we've got two things to look at. We've got the Velox F7SE flight controller and we've got the Velox V50ASE 4-in-1 ESC. Now there's really not that much to show you on the ESC but we will take a look at it in a minute. We're going to start though with the flight controller. Now, as it says on the front, it is an F7. What we'll do is give you a bit of an overview. This isn't going to be a review, but I do just want to be crystal clear in saying that T-Motor did send this to me for free, this and the ESC. They have not, though, paid me to make this video. They just said, hey, we've got a flight controller and ESC. Would you like to take a look at them? I said yes, and that's what you're getting here today. But I'm not going to be flying it. It's more than anything just going to give you an overview of the product. Now, as it says on the front, it is an F7-based flight controller, that'd be F722. It is a 30 by 30 mounting pattern. You can also see some interesting things on the board as well. So if we look around, you can see you've got a module down here. That is a Bluetooth module, so you can wirelessly configure this board via the SpeedyB app. We'll talk about that a bit more later on. Alongside the main chipset, you can also see there is a flash chip. That is for the onboard black box storage. And if then if we look around the board on this side, you can see we've got all all of our pads for our I.O. And if I flip it over on this side of the board, all of those pads are also on connectors too. So you don't have to solder if you don't want to. You can do it via headers. And then on this side of the board, we've got a USB-C port for connecting. Really good to see USB-C. I don't want to see any flight controllers now with micro USB. And then we've also got an OSD chip here as well. So this board will work with both analog as well as digital FPV systems. And then on this side, you can see we've got some voltage regulation. Regulators. Now, just coming over the specs, so as I've said, it is based on the STM32F722. It is fitted with the ICM42688P gyro, which is fitted on SPI, as we would expect. It has six UARTs. It supports both digital and analog FPV, so you can use digital FPV with this no problem at all, but it also has that OSD chip there if you want to use analog. It also has a Bluetooth adapter built in, which is really good to see. It's not actually on the main board. It's this little secondary board, and you can see that it does stick out a little bit beyond the side of the main PCB. That little track that you see there is the antenna, and you can use it with the SpeedyB app for configuration, just like you can on some of the SpeedyB flight controllers. Now, feature-wise, it does have built-in black box storage via this little Winbond SPI flash chip, which supports up to 128 megs, and it also has a built-in barrow sensor as well. Now, as I mentioned, it does work with digital FPV. It has dual onboard backs. It has a 5 volt back up to 2 amp and a 10 volt back up to 1.5 amp. Now, that is okay for the DJI system, Avatar HD, HD0. DJI, for instance, takes about 15 watts of power, which is exactly 1.5 amp at 10 volts. I do usually prefer to see a 2 amp back on digital-based FPV flight controllers, but 1.5 is fine. It supports beyond that into extreme anyway so don't worry you're going to have no problems the 1.5 amp at 10 volts will be fine now this flight controller does support up to eight motor outputs you can see the pads for that down there and there's a connector over here for that as well just something to mention on the connector for this on this flight controller they do specifically state that this is made to the Betaflight connection standard. If you don't know, Betaflight actually recommend a connector layout for boards, making sure that the wiring matches and T-Motor are complying with that here. What that means is if you're buying other products that also support the Betaflight connection standard, including the ESC here, you have less chance of problems or less need to actually worry about the wiring being connected between headers. However, I would always double check it just in case. Now, as I've said, this flight controller does support up to six UARTs and it has everything broken out on pads as well as connectors. If we look around, you can see over this side here, we've got our buzzer and our LED pads. There's also a pit option there as well. There is the option to adjust the voltage output. So you've got your five volt or your 10 volt available on the back and you adjust this via these little pads down here. And you also then have adjustment for the camera output for analog. You can set that to either be five volt or battery voltage as well via these little pads up here. Down here, 
you've got your output to your analog VTX. So you've got your video out, your power, your RX and your TX. On this side here, you've got your digital output, another UART. So you've got 5 volt ground RX3 and RSSI. Above that, you've got another UART, which is T1, R1 ground and 5 volt. Up here, you've got another UART, which supports RX5, TX5, as well as I2C. So you've got SDA and SCL on here as well. So you can use this with a GPS with a built-in compass if you want to. You then got your analog input over here for your camera if you're using it with analog OSD. And then over the top here, you've got your main motor pads. All of this is replicated by connections on the bottom as well. So as I've said, if you don't want to mess around soldering, you can do it via headers. Now, just showing you what is also included in the pack, we have our isolators, lots and lots of isolators for our flight controller. And then we have our pre-made wiring harnesses, which they include. There's loads of harnesses in here ready to connect up to all your hardware if you want to go that route. But if you don't, you can just solder directly to the pads as well. Next, moving over to the V50A SE ESC. Now, this is a 4-in-1, supports up to 6S, and it is BL Heli 32, so it's not BL Heli S. Now, again, just like the flight controller, it does support the Betaflight recommended wiring standard for this connector up here. So if you're using it with the T-Motor flight controller, it's fine, you've got no messing around. But if you're using it with another that also has the standard, that will work no problem at all. But again, I always do recommend checking and you can see that everything is labeled there on the connector as well. Now, looking around on this, there's not that much to show. We've got our battery inputs down here with our pads sticking out. We've then got our motor outputs on that side and that side there. You can see the FETs located on that side of the board there with some capacitors. We've got a current sensor up there, or a shunt resistor, I should say, for the current sensing. And then on this side, we've got our drivers as well as some more FETs. Now, this ESC is a 50 amp ESC, but you'll notice there's no heat sink included in this one. It isn't one of their absolute belt and brace ESCs like you do see from T-Motor with their metal heat sink installed. This one is a slightly more cut back model, but it does still have that high power output. Now, as I mentioned, it is running BL Heli 32, so you can have all of the usual features that you come to expect in that, RPM filtering, all of that stuff will work absolutely fine. And then included in the box, if we just take a look, they do include an XT60 pre-soldered to a harness for you. And then you do have some more isolators because you may be short of isolators because they don't give you that many in with a flight controller. And then they do include a capacitor as well as our wiring harness. The capacitor that they have included is a 470 UF 35 volts, so it's going to support 6S absolutely fine. Now, one last thing just to talk about is that wireless functionality. Now, as I've said, this is compatible with the SpeedyB app, although there is a couple of things you need to be aware of. First of all, it is not compatible with the iOS version. It only works with the Android version. Also, this little adapter will take up one of the UARTs. When you get this flight controller, you will need to make sure that you have enabled MSP on UART 6. That is the UART for this little module. If that isn't enabled, it won't actually connect. So what we'll do is just power it up to demonstrate it. If I just plug it in, I've put a quick XT30 on the ESC and we're powering through to the flight controller. If I then open the SpeedyB app, if I just go into plus, let it search for devices, nothing will show up. And then if I go down to unknown devices, you'll see a list of Bluetooth stuff that is showing in the room. You can see at the top, T-Motor FC was showing. If I click on it and wait a second, it should then connect. There we go. We've then got all of the usual options wirelessly via the SpeedyB app. So if you enter expert mode, it gives you that beta flight configurator look to it. You can see there, remove the flight controller. It's working absolutely fine. The only downside today, as I've said, is unfortunately, it currently only works with Android. Now, just have a quick look under the microscope at the board. You can see there we've got the STM32F722SOC. All looks fine. Pins all look good. Quality looks fine. We can then see our sensor there. We've got our wind bond flash chip. So that is what's given us our flash memory for our black box storage. 
and then over here you can see that little Bluetooth adapter. Now interestingly, this isn't running an ESP32. You would have usually expected to see an ESP32 on something like this. Instead, they're using a Bluetooth chip from ST Microelectronics. It is the 3011. It's one of their Bluetooth normal low power communication chips and it's actually soldered on this separate little module that they can choose to install or not install on the board depending what flight controller model you have but this one obviously is pre-installed and then you've got the little antenna that sticks out over the side I don't really have a problem with that I would have preferred that it was flat personally but it's not really going to catch anything it's just something though you do need to be aware of is there if we then move around we can see our barrow sensor there you can tell it's the barrow because it's got a little hole in it too you've got some leds there and then really you just got the rest of the pad so you can see there your option for your camera voltage pad on your analog camera so that's your connection here and then you've got the power option there so you can set it to either be five volt or battery voltage moving over to the back of the board the first thing you can see there is that analog osd chip you then got a crystal then got one of the voltage regulators one of the other voltage regulators both using the same chipset just set at different voltages you've got a diode you've got your button there and all of your other passive components just something to mention on the connectors on this side so this one here is our digital connector for the likes of dji fpv hd0 avatar hd you can see this already has 10 volt so it's 10 volt ground t2 r2 ground and r3 so that's going to give you your t2 and r2 for your standard uart for the osd and then you got r3 for the receiver input if you wanted to use it with the likes of dji 03 or the original fpv system using the dji original remote although i don't personally recommend you do that then just looking around the rest of the side there you got t3 r3 ground and 5 volt hopping over to there you've got cp ground vicc You've got your main ESC, and then you've got your LED over there. Overall, the build quality looks good. All of the components are fitted nicely. All of the soldering on everything looks tidy. There's no tombstoning, no sign of anything off on any angles. And really, overall, it's of the quality you would expect to find from the likes of T-Motor. Now, just doing the same on the ESC, first of all, there you can see some of our drivers. You've got the Fortier FD6288Qs, I think they are from the look of it. Yeah, there we go. You've then got your FETs down there. If you want to know what FETs they are, let's just see if we can see it. They are the HY... Let me just tilt it up and refocus. There you go, the HYG015N04s. So that's the main FETs. Again, everything looks clean and tidy. One area I do just want to look at around here, so let's just pop it down and refocus around there. Clearance around the bolt hole looks okay. You do have, from the looks of it, that pad going around the bolt hole there, although they do provide isolators. But I always just mention this, if I do see it on something, do be aware of it. You want to make sure that the isolators are installed because one of your motor outputs is going around that hole there. You can see it going all the way around to there. And that's that there. So just be aware of it because it would be very easy to cause damage if you didn't have that properly isolated. And then just flipping over to the other side of the board. Again, the situation is the same there. We've got your FET. You've got your shunt resistor. Some passives, some transistors. Plenty of capacitors. And then your ESC input. And again, overall... Looks clean and tidy. Now, price-wise, this is not the cheapest flight controller and ESC combination on the market. However, it is a high-quality flight controller like you'd expect to find from the likes of T-Motor. Now, price-wise, the F7SE comes in at $66.90 for the flight controller on its own, and the ESC comes in at $59.90, coming in at about $127 for the full stack. Certainly not the cheapest, but it isn't the most expensive either.
Now, if you're interested in getting them, there will be a link to them in the description. Now, as I've said, this wasn't really a review more than anything. It was an overview. I can't comment with regards to the longevity. I can't comment on how well it performs compared to other flight controllers. All I can tell you is it is a nice quality flight controller from T-Motor, as we would expect. And if you're interested in getting it, as I've said, the link will be in the description. Now, I just want to say a big thank you to T-Motor for sending these over. They will end up going in a build. I haven't got one planned quite yet, but these will go in it. If you're interested in seeing that, please do make sure you are subscribed to the channel. If you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content like this in the future, please also consider checking out the link to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. We're only able to do this on the channel with the support of the Patreons, and if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content in the future, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.